Section 31 of The Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Claire. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Stag, the Sheep, and the Wolf. One day a stag came to a sheep and asked her to lend him a measure of wheat. The sheep knew him for a very swift runner who could easily take himself out of reach were he so inclined. So she asked him if he knew someone who would answer for him. Yes, yes, answered the stag confidently. The wolf has promised to be my surety. The wolf, exclaimed the sheep indignantly. Do you think I would trust you on such security? I know the wolf. He takes what he wants and runs off with it without paying. As for you, you can use your legs so well that I should have little chance of collecting the debt if I had to catch you for it. Two blacks do not make a white. The Animals and the Plague Once upon a time a severe plague raged among the animals. Many died, and those who lived were so ill that they cared for neither food nor drink, and dragged themselves about listlessly. No longer could a fat young hen tempt Master Fox to dinner, nor a tender lamb rouse greedy Sir Wolf's appetite. At last the lion decided to call a council. When all the animals were gathered together, he arose and said, Dear friends, I believe the gods have sent this plague upon us as a punishment for our sins. Therefore the most guilty one of us must be offered in sacrifice. Perhaps we may thus obtain forgiveness and cure for all. I will confess all my sins first. I admit I have been very greedy and have devoured many sheep. They have done me no harm. I have eaten goats and bulls and stags. To tell the truth, I even ate up a shepherd now and then. Now if I am the most guilty, I am ready to be sacrificed. But I think it best that each one confess his sins as I have done. Then we can decide in all justice who is the most guilty. Your Majesty, said the fox, you are too good. Can it be a crime to eat sheep, such stupid mutton heads? No, no, your majesty, you have done them great honour by eating them up. And so far as shepherds are concerned, we all know they belong to that puny race that pretends to be our masters. All the animals applauded the fox loudly. Then, though the tiger, the bear, the wolf, and all the savage beasts recited the most wicked deeds, all were excused and made to appear very saint-like and innocent. Now it was the ass's turn to confess. I remember, he said guiltily, that one day as I was passing a field belonging to some priests, I was so tempted by the tender grass and my hunger that I could not resist nibbling a bit of it. I had no right to it, I admit. A great uproar among the beasts interrupted him. Here was the culprit who had brought misfortune on all of them. What a horrible crime it was to eat grass that belonged to someone else. It was enough to hang anyone for so much more an ass. Immediately they all fell upon him, the wolf in the lead, and soon had made an end to him, sacrificing him to the gods then and there, and without the formality of an altar. The weak are made to suffer for the misdeeds of the powerful. The Shepherd and the Lion A shepherd, counting his sheep one day, discovered that a number of them were missing. Much irritated, he very loudly and boastfully declared that he would catch the thief and punish him as he deserved. The shepherd suspected a wolf of the deed, and so set out toward a rocky region among the hills, where there were caves infested by wolves. But before starting out, he made a vow to Jupiter that if he would help him find the thief, he would offer a fat calf as a sacrifice. The shepherd searched a long time without finding any wolves, but just as he was passing near a large cave on the mountain side, a huge lion stalked out, carrying a sheep. In great terror, the shepherd fell on his knees. Alas, O Jupiter, man does not know what he asked. To find the thief, I offer to sacrifice a fat calf. Now I promise you a full-grown bull, if you but make the thief go away. We are often not so eager for what we seek after we have found it. Do not foolishly ask for things that would bring ruin if they were granted. The Dog and His Reflection A dog, to whom the butcher had thrown a bone, was hurrying home with his prize as fast as he could go. 
as he crossed a narrow footbridge he happened to look down and saw himself reflected in the quiet water as if in a mirror but the greedy dog thought he saw a real dog carrying a bone much bigger than his own if he had stopped to think he would have known better but instead of thinking he dropped his bone and sprang at the dog in the river only to find himself swimming for dear life to reach the shore at last he managed to scramble out but as he stood sadly thinking about the good bone he had lost he realized what a stupid dog he had been it is very foolish to be greedy end of section thirty one recording by claire